So capacitor reforming in itself is the basic concept makes sense because you need this oxide layer, you need this dielectric layer to basically prevent uh, you know short situations and you need you want that evenly spread across these plates to where uh, you have an even current flow. So you don't bas you, you basically don't want certain points where a whole lot more current is passing across the plates in that specific area. Suppose that's one way you could look at it. If that were to happen and you're slamming mains voltage on it or max voltage on it, then um, it might have problems if it's been sitting there for so long and it's just not necessarily, you know, all dried up. The electrolyte uh, you know, might be fine, uh, but that oxide layer, the dielectric might might not be there anymore, might need to be reformed, I guess you could say. Um, so that will be the idea there. Through that process, however you do it, whether you do it slow or fast, simple, quick charging through a ZVS just makes sense, right? Especially if you can uh, slow the rate if you wanted to, or, you know, set an output voltage and just kind of let it sit there. The reformer is basically based on a circuit just like this, which is a ZVS driver. The only difference is this one is a limited ZVS driver, only using a bug driver. So I basically found a window of voltages that I could adjust that would give me a nice little variation in my output. And then I could also current limit it through that voltage range. So basically I've got a 12 volt battery in there. And right now I got it cut down right now it's as low as it'll go so the current limiting if I cut the voltage up then I can get it a lot brighter and current limit it so basically I can limit the current real low like that and then I have that voltage range of adjustment and brightness Likewise, you can cut it all the way up, and it gets real bright. So it's basically just sort of a deal where I can run your standard, you know, maybe 5 to 10 watt or so LED uh, mains bulb. Just screw it in. Runs for a pretty long time. Runs off a 12 volt battery. Pulling 5 to 10 watts or less. Runs pretty efficient. Same deal. Except this one, you know, it's got the... Uh, bug driver after the 16 volt battery but that bug driver the function of that is to supply me a steady constant input voltage to the ZVS driver uh, but the difference is before uh, the ZVS driver I've got a PWM driver so the PWM driver is the actual way that I'm adjusting the output voltage on the ZVS so the uh, bug driver feeding the PWM driver feeding the ZVS driver which is giving me this rectified output. Got some high frequency diodes. It's rectifying the output. It's got a little tiny bit of smoothing on it. And then um, I've got, you know, some nice leads with some gator clips that I would feed my capacitor like that. Then I'm just coming out with this guy here. And I've just made it so I can plug in some meter probes to uh, read the output voltage. You know, I've got a internal battery voltage meter here that's not my output voltage but when I flip the switch to the off button that's what sends my output to the uh, internal bleeder resistors pretty much a necessary feature that you always want to add um, if you're going to build something like this you know I wouldn't want 500 volts just kind of floating around on these caps so as long as I know it's hooked up we got this switch in the off position then uh, I'm not going to have dangerous gunshots ready to uh, go off on these caps. Likewise, I've got a neon right here on my output. So that just kind of reminds me that maybe I've got my output switched to the on position and not on the bleeders and I've cut the circuit off and I forgot to bleed it. That'll kind of remind me like, oh, you know, the, I've got a high voltage on here still, so I need to bleed them. That's pretty much it. You can use a ZVS driver to charge the crap out of some capacitors like this very quickly and it's going to pull a lot of amps at some point to do it. The idea is I don't want to overcharge a cap. I want to be sort of precise with it. So basically just limiting the ZVS driver. So that's pretty cool. As far as um, 
the health actual leakage you really want to be accurate with leakage uh, that's where you need that regulated supply uh, that's going to put out a very constant precise output voltage then it's going to be able to maintain that voltage by feeding a certain amount of current into the capacitor as the capacitor is naturally draining down because of its leakage its internal leakage that it's going to have at that point you're going to be able to measure how much current is actually going into the capacitor to maintain that particular voltage it's going to be such a small amount of current that um, it's really hard to get an accurate measure of what that is without using an actual instrument of some kind or like an analog you know milliamp meter or something like that it's hard to say what the acceptable leakage would be on these specific capacitors um, you probably have to look it up according to the data sheet etc uh, but it's never going to be a lot so you know one sort of easy way to tell would be if it's sitting there draining down ultra fast well it kind of lets you know it's like okay this thing's got crazy leakage might not be suitable anymore it's probably got to toss it and so got just this single cap hooked up it's bleeding right now voltage probes right here on this meter just gonna let it drain down so use this knob to bump my duty cycle up so let me just bump it all the way up so you can see the rate that that's charging it's fairly fast but it's not so fast that it's going to get out of control a lot of times you don't limit that in any way the zvs driver just pushes so many amps initially that it just, just shoots way up there so you don't want it to go too fast obviously but so that's charging you could sit there and watch it basically get up to 400 volts if you wanted to fairly easily that's sort of the idea there kind of see how it climbs and at this point now the uh now it's being loaded by that neon though so it's kind of interesting just to see this cap actually charge to its voltage but in the end i'm going to use about two of those in series and um you know which means around what I'll end up feeding the circuit total each one of these is only going to see about 300 volts tops if even more than like 250 so you can see basically that's the rate at which this thing will go up it'll eventually get to 400 if I wanted it to I'll probably stop it just a shy just a little shy of that Be like 385 you get the idea so I back that down now it's just naturally discharging or I suppose if I have it more metered then I could uh, match the leakage give it a steady uh, steady very low current charge and so again if I just cut it all the way off and now it's leaking through this guy and uh, itself and that's just how that goes so since I'm done charging that I don't want to leave that voltage on there so that's when you switch it off now it's draining through the uh, bleeder in there so obviously you want to make sure that you do that let that get below 50 That was a bleeder that came out of a VFD also. I mean, it seems like a pretty decent value, uh, 4,300 ohms. Assuming you might have 600 volts on uh, some of these caps. Do the quick charge also, so cut it back on. So when I hit this button here, try to give it the quick charge. So it's naturally just kind of picking up because I just was draining it. So if I hold that button, then you can see it puts a much faster charge on it. Again, I don't want it to be too crazy fast because I don't want it to get out of control. But you can see if I don't want to wait, and again, I can bring it to about the same voltage, then uh, you know, discharge it again. So again, that's kind of the point there. And uh, I've also got it current limited. 
through the bug driver. So if I didn't have that current limited, it'll probably shoot way up uh, in voltage a lot faster. Um, you know, which is something that I want on a different type of setup, but not for something like this. All right, now we got the two caps hooked up in series, leading off. It's on. We got uh, some another meter hooked up just to one. Let's see what the voltage of half the series is as it's charging. So let me flip the output on. I'm gonna put it at a relatively slow charge like this. So it's fairly close. So at about 150 or so, let's say. Pretty close. Yeah, about 150, 75 volts. Right? Let's go up to about 200. So that's pretty close. It's pretty damn close. 300. Yep, that's about right. So again, I'm looking for 200 volts on one cap when I get to a total of four, and that's pretty damn close. So as you can see, with this particular uh, duty cycle, the charge rate slows down the higher you get. At this point, uh, it would want to be current limiting, but I've got it set a little bit higher, but let's just say it's pulling. The ZBS driver is going to pull a little bit more uh, current now than it would have before. So we're getting close to 5, and I'm going to want to see about 250 on that cap right there. Once I get to 5. So that's looking pretty close. Boom. Yeah, so maybe like a one volt difference. It's not too bad. So again, at this point, bringing it up to uh, 6 or 650, something like that. Probably take a little time. Hit that button. So you can see it just brings it up a little bit. So, so at this point, it's probably current limited. Maybe like uh, 4 amps. And uh, again, I decided not to... Uh, let that battery push too much. You can see the battery gets pulled down a little bit. So it's down about 14.6 now. So not a crazy fast charge rate, but I'd say up to about 400 volts or so. That's a pretty damn fast uh, charge rate. It's probably reaching the point about the max voltage that it'll uh, output, just the way it's set. So, yeah, about 582, something like that. So, could adjust this to uh, bring it all the way up to 6. That's probably what I'm going to do. Just kind of fiddle with it. So, I'm going to go ahead and discharge those. And you can sort of see how the bleeders work. It's kind of an inverse of the charging. It's going to bleed off that high voltage really quickly. And, um, as it ramps down, it's going to bleed a lot slower the voltage is getting lower and lower so again right about there it's a pretty safe level and um, I pretty much conclude a basic test on um, just double checking to make sure some caps like that are going to hold up fine under voltage and again I don't have to uh, mess around with any line voltage in the process so it's dangerous enough as it is you don't need those floating with the mains voltage so bing bang boom kind of carried around moving anywhere I feel like that's a handy little deal so probably another one I'll end up making that's more sophisticated is gonna have uh, Tesla Unmare's idea about using a comparator to uh, regulate the output voltage so probably spend some time building a really nice output transformer and uh, make that regulated very precisely so in the future set a particular voltage and boom get it to climb up real quickly to it if you want to or get it to climb up very slowly if you want to now I'll probably put a uh, milliamp meter in line to actually show what the leakage is in the process so something like that man that becomes a very cheap uh, capacitor reformer 
basically a leakage tester if you want it to be without having to spend uh, thousands of dollars so yeah, it's pretty cool so with a different meter hooked up here this one here you can actually see when testing let's just say like this bringing it up a little bit in voltage um, and then watching it bleed down I get an actual difference now that's maybe about a volt more than I got on the other meter what you can actually do is um, bleed it down so these are because of this imbalance as they bleed down I suppose what happens is uh, you're gonna have one as it reaches zero and the other one hasn't reached zero yet like here we go it's gonna start back feeding and charging this capacitor negative through the uh, bleeder resistor so now this is basically bleeding off into the other capacitor more or less you got this negative voltage here I got one bleeder across a series but really you want a bleeder that goes across each capacitor in this series like that it really be the only way to uh, prevent that negative voltage from building up on one of them so it's kind of weird to see that you know it's like you you literally charge these caps up they discharge you'll see one at zero you got enough imbalance you're going to read a negative voltage uh, on the other one but since i can see it's only you know about one and a half volts or so difference that's not too big a deal again i'm only putting about 300 volts tops on each so it'd be a 600 volts max total with those in series and to balance that out better, I would actually have a balance center resistor on each one, you know, serving the bleeder function more or less. That's how that would work.